uh, the Ireland press conference. It is live. Jordan Larmer starts at fullback. It's the big news. Andre Conway on the wing. Live now to Joe Schmidt for the Ireland press conference. Larmer at fullback. The replacements are Niall Scannell, Dave Kilcoyne, Andrew Porter, Craig Byrne, Jack Conan, and the backs are Luke McGrath, Jack Carty, and Chris Farrell. Joe, I just get your thoughts on the selection. I mean, with the, the players injured in, in, in the backs, particularly, was it the case of the team kind of picking itself? Um, but not really. Uh, you'll see Joey will run fully uh, in the warm up just as a, as a reserve back. He's trained really well this week. I think Keith Hills was the, was the sharpest player at training um, on Wednesday. Uh, certainly hit the best time, was very, very sharp. So, you know, he's good. Rob Carney. Uh, trained well as well. So it was really just that we were getting very tight for time and uh, the best continuity we had, we felt, was was to to have the guys who trained through the through the time that we've been here. So that's uh, that's what we went with and you know and it's exciting to have the back three that we've got as well. It's a it's a great opportunity and a, a fantastic challenge for them. For uh, Jordan and Andrew, what can they bring to Ireland and was there any Question mark in your mind of who played fullback and who played on the wing? Not really, no. Um, yeah, I, I think that their their enthusiasm is, is something that's contagious. I think their uh, ability to get themselves into the game. Um, I, I think Andrew has proven he's, he's got real aerial ability and uh, that will be really useful for us. Um, I, I still have the, the vision in my mind clearly of Jordan Lama beating his ruffle out to a ball in the... Um, in the third test in Sydney on the, our Australian tour in the middle of last year. So, um, you know, he, he's very good there as well. And Jacob, of, of course, is, is a big man in the backfield. So, you know, th there's that. Um, they're all feeding off each other. They're all young men who, who are very, very keen to impress. So, really, I, I, I guess they've, they've now got that opportunity. Sure, there seems to be a uh, word going around that if the day rains, uh, it might suit Ireland better than Scotland. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's interesting. I, I guess, um, you know, it, you just have to adapt to the conditions. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they will adapt as well. You know, if uh, if Greg labels it scrum half, he's a very proficient kicker. He's a very effective goal kicker as well. And I think, you know, when it... When it does rain, points become just that little bit more valuable because they're harder to get because it's harder to sustain the continuity of play. Therefore, uh, Greg Laidlaw could be very useful for them. And we know Finn Russell has a, a huge variety of kicking game. So uh, he will be a threat. And, and there's the length of Stuart Hogg's kicking game. He's got a very long kicking game. So I, I think in, in the end, um, when you match that up with us, uh, with, with the likes of Connor Murray and, and Jonathan Sexton, um, I don't think there's too much between the teams, wet or dry. Rory, in terms of humidity and the conditions, how do you think that'll affect things in terms physically and even all handling and load? Uh, yeah, look, I think, like Joe said, we, we have to, to adapt. We've been here for um, a good few days now. We've trained in, in some rain. We've trained in, in, a, lot of, in a bit of heat. Um, so, yeah, look, we've got used to it. We've, we've trained with various bits and pieces over the summer, whether it was in Portugal or at home. Um, and look, we've geared ourselves up. We, we knew what the potential conditions would be. And, and I think we're in, a, we're in a good place for that. Ultimately, I think the, the acid test will be something. You know, you can put in, you can put whatever you want in the ball, you can put whatever you want in training. But ultimately, when you get to the game and the pressures of that, um, it'll be about making sure that, that you can, can stay focused on what you need to do. I don't know if you've seen the surface uh, game the night before. How do you think it's going to stand the test? Yeah, I, I haven't seen the surface since we since we had a look here some months ago. Um, so whatever the surface is, we'll have to cope with. Um, if it has been chewed up a bit by um, by the All Blacks and the Springbok, it's a pretty big game. Some pretty big men running around. Uh, but I've no doubt one of the things that has impressed me is is how quickly they can they can turn around a manicured surface. Uh, we trained in Ichihara there um, and they'd, they'd very quickly turn it around and uh, and make sure that it was that it was in tip top shape each time. So 
you know, the, the surface was um, was good here. The two games we played in Ajinomoto and uh, in a Copa Stadium last time we were here in, in 2017, in the summer of 2017. So, you know, we would anticipate a, a very good surface, e even if it is a little bit wet. Joe, obviously you've been building to this game for a while. Um, at the end of last year, Johnny had said, it was a great year, you guys haven't peaked yet. Um, are you ready to beat now? Um, you, you've just got to hope so. You know, I can't guarantee anything um, in 20, in 48 hours time, uh, we'll have a better idea. We'll be, um, we'll be just, uh, you know, arriving at the stadium and getting ready to warm up and I'll be anxious, um, you know, some of you people, you know, you've been great supporters of ours and, and you'll be anxious as well because you, you never quite know. But one thing I, I will be really confident of is that, that we will be tough to beat. Um, that uh, in 48 hours' time, uh, I think you'll see a, a very, um, you know, a very collective effort and um, that, that effort will, will make us tough to beat. Now, I've no doubt that the Scots are... are I work it away and, and going to make sure that they are something similar. Um, I don't think there's a huge amount between the two teams, and so whoever does maybe get the bounce of the ball or, or can be just a little bit more efficient than the other, um, it, it may just tip the balance. And have you um, got a little bit still up your sleeve? Um, yeah, short sleeves, <laughs> not too much up my sleeves. Uh, I, I, again, you know, there's there's certainly things that you that you do hold back a bit. I've no doubt we'll see something from Scotland that we haven't seen before, because um, you know we've we've been planning this for a long time, um, and and when you get the the opportunity to put it into practice, uh, it, it still has to be put into practice accurately. And uh, one of the things that gets in the way of that is the amount of pressure the opposition can put on you. And I've no doubt that. Both teams will be trying to put pressure on each other so that whatever they have got planned isn't quite as effective as that hope. Joe, what was the most difficult selections for you and the coaches that you've had to make? Um, well, they started in the summer and, and they've worked their way all the way through, you know, going from 45 to that 45 to 31 and now, and now to 15 to start and, and the bench. I think one of the things that made it easier in the backs was that there are backs who've trained all week and there are backs who are now fully fit and up and running and and we just felt that for continuity's sake we would we would also show the amount of faith we had we have in the squad and um up front there were there were some tight tight decisions as well um we've been really happy with some of the guys who've come off the bench for us and uh you know if they can continue to do what they're doing it, you know whether a player starts or comes off the bench they are every bit as important to us uh, because you know that in the last quarter of the match, that's, you know, if the teams are close, that's that's pivotal. And we need the right people coming off the bench doing the right job. So, um, I, yeah, I think across the board, I, I think we're happy with uh, the starting 15 and the bench. And you know, we'd be happy to supplant some of those guys um, with some of the guys who aren't there. But um, that's... That's what you've got to be confident of when you've got a squad of 31. You've got to be confident of all 31 of them. Okay, yeah. last question in this well, section. Yeah, Klein um, didn't make it uh, obviously this week. Um, what's your, how have you broken down how you pick your second rows and what's, what's the thinking? Is it because there's another big game in six days' time or what's the, what's the thinking the whole process? Yeah, I, again, that, that, that was a, a relatively long discussion. I think. Um, you know, James Ryan has come back in for these last two games and, and done really well. Um, he's of known value to us. You know, in Henderson's almost got 50 caps. That experience, uh, uh, he, he was involved in the big games uh, in the World Cup last time. I, I think to have that experience is really important, particularly in the first game out. So uh, for, for Jean um, to kind of find his way um, into the tournament, uh, I've no doubt that he'll feature in, in, in some really important games for us. Um, coming off the bench, Ty Byrne, he has ability to change the game up a little bit, so so we felt probably his versatility across the whole back five, um, specifically in the second row for us, because we've, uh, we've obviously got Jack Conan on the bench as well, but uh, we do feel like 
he gets great pressure on the ball. He uh, he has uh, a little bit more time with us than John has had, so we just kind of felt for continuity again. We we would go with that with that combination. Okay, we will switch now into the embargoed uh, written word. Yeah, that's uh, the fairly brief thoughts of Joe Smith after naming his Ireland team to take on Scotland at Rugby World Cup opener this Sunday morning. As you can see, joined uh, on this Friday morning. Like, what we replace one very passionate uh, inter county GA football supporter with his team that generally get laid deep into the championship, don't ever really quite get over the line with another one. Nathan, good morning to you. Wow, harsh. The uh, team will come back to a bit more. A bit more abuse sure, of mail. Over the course of the, uh, fine. Of the morning. That'll Good morning, much, Adrian. Very much amongst the plan. Great to be here. Bright and early, 7 o'clock. Live, exclusive Ireland team naming. Okay, Jim. Calm it now for a second. Okay. Let's Buzzing. bring our uh, viewers the uh, team this morning because we had to get straight into Josh Schmidt there at the very top of that. So just a reminder of the Ireland team to take on Scotland at fullback. It's Jordan Larmer gets the start there. It'll be just his fifth ever uh, start at fullback in an Ireland jersey. On the wings, Andrew Conway uh, on one wing and Jacob Stockdale on the other. Uh, he's gone for the combination of Gary Ringrose and Bundy Aki in midfield with Johnny Sexton and Conor Murray in the half-back positions. Uh, the front row, Keen Healy, Rory Best and Tyke Furlong. Ian Henderson will join James Ryan in the second row. And the back row is Josh van der Flaer, uh, CJ Stander and Peter O'Mahony. So that's how the uh, back row stacks up. A bit of an opportunity, obviously, there for uh, van der Flaer as well. And on the bench will be Niall Scannell, Dave Kilcoyne, Andrew Porter, Tyke Byrne, Jack Conan, Luke McGrath, Jack Carty and Chris Farrell. So that is the match day 23. The big news, obviously, is the uh, start at fullback for Larmer and Conway on the uh, right wing. There was a lot of discussion during the mm. week. Had, had them in the opposite direction. Um, it didn't come up in the press conference, but you suspect that actually over the course of the game, they will be quite uh, interchangeable. You'd imagine so, and all the speculation was that Andrew Conway would start at 15. You mentioned like Jordan Larmer's played four games at international level, mm. one of them in the Six Nations how Joe Schmidt has ended up in this position where Jordan Larmer starting the biggest game of his tenure against Scotland at full-back with that little level of experience. And the very fact he went with Robbie Henshaw at full-back in that experiment against England would suggest that he hasn't been fully convinced of Jordan Larmer. It's certainly not the team that Joe Schmidt would have wanted starting his first game of a World Cup. That back three have never played together. It does re-emphasise, I think, that for all the talk and all these press conferences over the last week, Joe Schmidt doesn't play players unless they're training mm. for the full week of the match. They spent all week talking up Earls, Carney, said there that Keith Earls was the best player in training, went mm. better than anybody in training on Wednesday, yet isn't ready to start a game four days later. Ultimately, the decision was made that if you hadn't played a part in every training session since they arrived in Japan, you weren't going to play. Now, you can understand, there's no point taking risks and Keith Earls picks up another knock and suddenly you uh, miss the tournament. But it's strange how this game has suddenly come upon us. I feel we've had this obsession over the last two or three weeks about South Africa for many reasons, with a lot of the doping conversation, but also the fact that they've turned their form around, that we are very much focused on a World Cup quarterfinal, potentially against South Africa. And are we just treating the Scots a little bit lightly? Um, I mean, there's always a disparity between what we're thinking, I suppose, and what the uh, squad will be mm. thinking. And um, you'd be absolutely certain that they're uh, that they're not. We've had a fairly decent record against them over the last couple of years. They're going to name their team, it seems, in about three hours' time or thereabouts. Um, but uh, you would be concerned. The concern for me against uh, the Scotland team would be the quality of their uh, ten and fullback positions, and they are very much a team that uh, subscribe to that sort of dual playmaker mm. role. And uh, there was a, a, a wry smile from what I understand from one of the Scottish squad yesterday when they were asked about the possibility that Rob Kearney wouldn't be starting a fullback and whether that might factor into their plans like of bloody course it will mm. and that's maybe the slight surprise for me about that Ar Ireland team selection that Conway you would think despite having only two starts of fullback versus Larmer's four is actually the safer option and particularly given the conditions that we're pretty sure are going to be there it's not doesn't seem as if it's going to be the typhoon conditions that we might have once expected but there will be winds it appears certainly the forecast at this point and there will be rain as well and uh, like actually in some ways despite all the conversations about Rob Kearney over the last four years this if you were blood, if if you knew the conditions that we're going to be facing in our tough, what what looks to be our toughest rugby mm. world cup pool game, you would blood a player exactly like Rob Kearney to be able to fill that uh, fill that position for you. So it's incredibly unfortunate that he was absolutely cut out for this game and for these conditions, and, and he now won't make it. 
Um, so, and that's maybe the surprise, but you will see Larmer's going to get absolutely bombed all day with uh, with high ball, you absolutely assume that. It, it'll be interesting too, and we'll talk to uh, Owen, who's going to be on the line uh, for us very shortly after the main press conference in Yokohama. We're going to talk to Alan Quinlan a bit later on. We're going to talk to Brendan Mackin as well, who's the former Leinster centre, uh, who would have been a teammate of Andrew uh, Conway as well. We can get his thoughts on all of this. Uh, it might also dictate some of um, Ireland's uh, play in mm. this game. Like, do we kick into the backfield in a way that we might have done before on the basis that actually you might get that ball back at you doubly quick in the air and windy, windy and wet conditions might not be the might not be the safest of plays no like it's a very exciting looking back three from Ireland all when, of a sudden when we have the ball when I'm we have the ball excited about it. everybody but it just feels so anti everything Joe Schmidt is about with Ireland where it's played as safe as possible and there's never really been any question that Rob Carney for all the unwarranted criticism he receives over the years mm -hmm. like at a World Cup first and foremost you don't want to make mistakes and you do look at that back line and feel it lacks some ballast even with Gary Ringrose getting the selection ahead of Chris Farrell and like, it seems sh strange even be discussing that that like, Gary Ringrose is this wonder boy of mm -hmm. Irish rugby but has had a dip in form but a sense that actually what Joe Schmidt wants in the centre is two big, powerful men. It is an Irish team that could play a lot of very attractive rugby. You just wonder, is it an Irish team that's been prepared to play attractive rugby? Those players individually can do it, but are they going to be allowed to play to that skill set, or are they playing to a game plan that was very much built around having Rob Carney, Keith Earls, and Robbie Henshaw, mm. and does that suit them? Now, one of the things with World Cups, and you'll read this in a lot of the previews, is they do take on a bit of a life of their own. Players come <clears> alive, and we, in a decade's time, we could be talking to Andrew Conway about that f two months in Japan where his career changed forever, and how did he never repeat that form? That yeah. Something just happens. But you do think, and it wouldn't be at all surprising, I think, for Conway and Larmer to start three of the four pool games, but not start the World Cup quarterfinal regardless of injuries, that actually Rob Carney and Keith Earls may just play that one game against Japan and not be seen again until a World Cup quarter-final. If, if I were Josh Smith, that's what I, if, if I was dealing with a full deck at that point, and frequently, mm. obviously, there are a bunch of factors. One stat I saw yesterday about the number of games that the starting 15 in Rugby World Cup finals over the last maybe six, the number of games that that exact 15 had played together was one. Right. So i.e. there will be changes and plenty of changes that you won't expect, I won't be able to plan for. But if I'm Josh Schmidt, at this juncture, right, I mean, because you could argue, now, this isn't by way of getting ahead of ourselves in any way, shape or form, but you could argue that we're not going to get overly tested in the pool. That's not something we've overly discussed or overly um, mm. thought about too much up to this point. You can be absolutely certain that the squad aren't thinking it, but it is possible. Oh. So how much stock you put into the fact that Jordan Larmer goes out and has the game of his life even on uh, on Sunday morning or even against Japan, how much actual weight you put behind that in terms of picking a quarter final team? I would think, uh, I would think if Rob Carney's fit, I'm putting him back in. Again, you're not underestimating the Scots there. That actually, there is an opportunity here for Jordan Larmer. This isn't a game against Russia or even a game against Japan. That for Jordan Larmer and Andrew Conway, they're going out a World Cup opener, the biggest game of the pool against Scotland very much a tier one nation, that if you can go and perform at this level, maybe you can put something in Joe Schmidt's mind. Now, I, I think we all feel it's unlikely, mm. but if Larmer goes out and has the game of his life... I think the difficulty is that if it's a dream pool, mm. right? Like, we, we've talked ourselves around to the fact that Scotland are going to be tough, of course they are, and I've certainly heard in some quarters that Japan are going to put up a bit of a stiff test to us, particularly the team that we saw before the last two warm-up games against Wales, that actually we... This, could be a stiffer test than we'd ever really expected it to be. But it is a dream pool in so many ways. And I think that if we had the likes of a South Africa or New Zealand in that pool and Jordan Lammer had gone out and had an absolute whirly against them, then at that point you're saying, well, actually, this guy deserves the jersey. Mm. But in some ways, and it's difficult for him, he is on a little bit of a hiding to nothing against Scotland because if he goes out and has a great game and we beat them 7, 10 points, it's like, grand, well, sure, that was just really what was expected. Like, it's difficult for him to make a mark against those teams in that pool. Well, you can absolutely see a situation that if Ireland don't win a quarter-final, that we're talking about, were Ireland undercooked? Mm. Did the players play enough game in the weeks leading up that essentially after the Scotland game, and with respect to Japan, that they had this sort of three-week break where other teams are coming in a little bit more ready? Yeah. Having a quick look through the starting 15 and going through previous Joe Schmidt sides, this 
15 never played together, but 14 of the 15 actually played in the Six Nations win against France right. this season. The only change is Conway in for Earls. Larmer started full back in that game. The rest of the team is the exact same. It was Ringrose and Aki in the centre. So it's not that different because no. part of my thinking when I saw the team first was like, how did Joe Schmidt end up in this position, having had four years to prepare, having had the entire cycle, whereby Andrew Conway and Jordan Larmer both playing the biggest game of their careers. Now, that when we lost England in that first game of the Six Nations, that suddenly all these players weren't given more game time. But then you look, actually, did it all start pretty much against mm. the French? It's still, I don't know, it feels like an underwhelming starting 15. And I knew it was coming. I, I particularly look at that back row and think, she's Sean O'Brien and Jamie Heaslip. Mm. You had one of, if not the best, back rows in the world. And right now with CJ Sanders form, you're looking at that back row and thinking... Pfft. He's probably one of, yeah, outside of all the injuries and all that stuff, he's probably one of the most fortunate players mm. to have been in that team. And it had been a huge suggestion over the last few days that that was the way it was going to go. But I think Jack Conan can feel um, somewhat aggrieved that he hasn't got the nod here. Um, and there'll be huge pressure on CJ Stander. I'm sure the Scots are looking at that selection and saying, listen, we have done a number on this guy before in terms of CJ Stander. And he ain't in form at the minute. Probably had a, one of his best games of late against Wales the last day out. And it, there will be a huge, I think, momentum uh, behind Ireland from that game as well. Do you know what? Like, we can go out on Sunday and get beaten by Scotland and it's not actually going to make a huge difference one way or the other because we're not even setting our own minds about whether we're better off playing New Zealand or South Africa. Mm. 